I'm going to try to create an OpenMDA authorization model for a multi-tenant project management system uh, using an OpenMDA MCP. I just prompted the compiler to do it. It is using agent mode code with, with Cloud4. Uh, as you see, it's contacted the MCP server, and now it's trying to figure out how to create a model for that use case. Now it created a model, is using the, that MGA format that you use for authorization models in MGA. And uh, it's realizing there is some issues in the model and, and now it's, it fixed it. And uh, now it's creating tests for that authorization model. Let's see what we have. We have an organization, a team, a project, tasks, and comments, and files. Uh, those are the entities that uh, the LLM decided are relevant for a project management system. And this is interesting because you can prompt anything. You can prompt for a specific kind of application. You can point to a website. You can point, put the company name or, or the create a model for X company, for a product, for an open API specification. It will figure it out and create a model that works for that. So in the, here in, in, in the hierarchy, you see the task belong to a project, the members, teams belong to organization, project organization. So it's creating a, a hierarchy that makes sense. And the permissions are inherited to the hierarchy. So I can create a project if I'm um, the project, the lead of the team or an admin from an organization. You see that also now generating the tests and run the tests. One test failed, that's this object's test failed. Now it's fixing it and that is going to run the test again and it will pass it. We will pass all of them, so we're happy. Let's see what it created. So it added some tuples to do the test. So it's adding users to organization, uh, teams within the organization, projects within the organization, and all the teams, uh, tasks, uh, comments, files, and then specified certain permission checks. User Alice, who is an admin, needs to be able to do everything in the organization. And uh, Bob, who is a member, has different permissions. Team leads should be able to create projects and manage teams, but team members probably shouldn't. And uh, so, yeah, team member cannot uh, create a project or manage a team. So, we're uh, specifying all the assertions there for every kind of role and, and all the permissions. And uh, so now it's saying, okay, what can a project team members do depending on the project they are? And in addition of doing all the checks for uh, all the tests for authorization checks, it also uses a test list users and list object use cases. For example, organization that child is a member of, or all the people who can edit a specific project. Okay, so now it's creating a quick implementation guide, uh, guide for developers. It created also model visualization. So let's see what it's doing there. So this model visualization helps you understand the, the hierarchy and how it works. Pretty cool. Sometimes the LLM does this, sometimes it does not. And a readme explaining uh, the project and how it is, it is designed. And an implementation guide that tells you actually how to build this. Uh, this is all something that the first time I see it creating it and install the CLI, running with Docker, and then examples for TypeScript, how you write relationships, add user to a team, create projects, authorization checks. Uh, certain APIs get all the projects the user can manage, an express example, a Python implementation. This is awesome. And then, yeah, a use case in Python, a fast API integration. Very cool, too. And, uh, and what else is doing? Performance consideration, how you use uh, batches in writes and in checks, bulk permission checks. Awesome how you can test it, <laughs> this is great. Okay, great, and, and, and how to use the CLI. So I could keep iterating on this and ask for more features and, uh, and add custom roles, add temporal access, all of those things, and it will keep evolving the model. So this is a great tool to learn how to use OpenMGA and to learn how to model, apply it for different use cases, actually learn how to implement it too. Let's see the MCPs we have configured. Uh, there we have the OpenMGA MCP. You can find the MCP openmga.dev/mcp. We also have the the DeepWiki 
MCP configure, but it wasn't started. We are not using it for this example. Actually, DeepWiki has information about all the CL uh, SDKs and the CLI from OpenFGA, so you can use it to help you implement FGA in multiple uh, platforms and languages. That's it. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to watch this presentation, and I hope you have fun modeling with FGA as I did.